What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we are gonna check out one of my favorite cabs, the Marshall MF280. Let's do it. All right guys, hope you're doing great out there today. If this is your first time here at my channel, what I do is I take awesome high gain guitar amps, cabinets, speakers, pickups, overdrives, pedals, kittens, lawn mowers. I record them with a simple SM57 setup and I give you guys the unprocessed audio on your end. So if you're into E-standard thrash riffs, drop D hardcore riffs, and 34 year old dudes with 50 year old knees, you're in the right place. Consider hitting the like button and subscribing on the way out so you don't miss any more of my stuff, including me deteriorating in front of your eyes. All right guys, so this is a cabinet that I have talked about many, many times on this channel. This is the Marshall MF280. So this cabinet was actually Marshall's answer to the Mesa oversized cabs that started to dominate the market in the late 90s and early 2000s. At the time, it seemed like the oversized Mesa cab with vintage 30s was pretty much becoming like the standard for hard rock and metal bands everywhere. So Marshall, of course, being a computer competing company in the same space wanted to come out with their own iteration of a similar cab. Enter the Marshall MF280. Now, there is actually an MF400 cab as well that Marshall released. It's part of the same series, but that cabinet has G12 K100 speakers, whereas the MF280 that we have here has the Marshall MF Vintage speaker. I will absolutely be doing a teardown and a demo of the MF400 cab as I have one of those as well. But for today, we're gonna focus on the MF280. So starting with the speaker that I mentioned, the MF Vintage Speaker. This is a Vintage 30 speaker, but it is a variation of a Vintage 30 speaker. So the Vintage 30 has become a very odd and contentious and confusing topic lately because I think that everybody is finally becoming aware of the fact that a Vintage 30 is not a Vintage 30 meaning that there are a lot of iterations of the Vintage 30 that can vary wildly in sound. Now, originally many people, including myself, thought that it essentially was just, you know, UK made versus Chinese, but it is way more complex than that with Celestian making technically, you know, specific recipes for certain brands, Mesa having their own brand, the Marshall vintage speaker that's in the 1960 AV cabinets that they offer being pretty much a completely different speaker. And then even like Friedman and Bogner, they have different V30s in them because the dust caps on those speakers are larger than say the ones that come in uh, a standard Chinese Vintage 30 that you would buy off the shelf today. So that is just the tip of the iceberg on the Vintage 30 variations. But needless to say, the Marshall MF Vintage is just another one of those variations. So when talking to Michael Smith at Omega Ampworks, he had mentioned that the MF Vintage is basically the same as the Helitone 60L that you would find in the Avatar cabs. I believe it's the 60L and not the 60. Correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, but that speaker is essentially supposed to be like a slightly worn in sounding Vintage 30. I find that these sound much closer to the Mesa Rectifier speakers now. The MF280 is 16 ohm, whereas the Mesa is eight ohm, and that is going to be a difference right there, but these speakers are definitely darker than a standard Vintage 30. They are pretty close to the Mesa iteration in my experience. I find that these cabs overall just sound smoother up top and have a nice forward midsection, which is personally what I like best out of Vintage 30s. So on top of the speakers, this cab is oversized and it is pretty much the exact same dimensions as a Mesa oversized rectifier cabinet. So this cab is 100% birch. If you guys are familiar with Marshall 1960 cabs, you will know that the back panel on those cabs has been an MDF or a particle board panel for a long time. I think since the late or mid to late 70s, they have been using those uh, the MDF back panels. I don't personally think that it's better or worse. I think it's just a little bit different. A full MDF cab, that's a different story, but as far as the back panel, you know, I don't, I don't mind it, depending on the speakers that are in the cab. But with this cab, you get a full birch back panel, so this cab is 100% birch plywood as opposed to the 1960 cabs, which have the MDF back panel. One thing that does bum me out about these cabs is they have plastic handles, but in the same breath, this plastic is way better than the plastic that they use on the 1960 cabs because 
That plastic is known to shatter very, very easily. It's a very hard and very brittle plastic, whereas this is kind of like a, almost like a rubbery, flexible plastic. So again, not as you know durable as something with metal handles, but I will definitely take these handles over the standard 1960 handles any day of the week. But yeah, this cab came out with the Mode 4 amplifiers in the early 2000s. It was basically, you know, that was Marshall's answer to the new metal and the rectifier craze. As everybody knows, the Mode 4 flopped. The amp itself flopped. It was extremely expensive and people just did not seem to like it. These cabs at the time were very pricey compared to the 1960 cabs, I think. Someone put the correct pricing down, but I remember looking at these in Musician's Friend catalog when I was a younger kid. And the 1960 cabs were like 800 bucks new. And the Mode 4 cabs, I think were twelve dollars or $1,300 new. So, I mean, these things were really expensive. They were considered like a premium option by Marshall. But because the Mode 4 flopped so hard as an amplifier, the cabs kind of became obscure as well. So for a long time, you could pick these things up on the used market for really cheap. The one that I have my hand on right here, I paid $200 for. My MF400 cab with the K100s in, I paid $200 for that one. And I have another slant that I purchased off of Guitar Center for $219, but that cab came with uh, Eminence Wizard speakers on it. I actually made a video about the pickup of that cab in one of my year trip videos from last summer if you wanna check that out. But yeah, I think we've done enough talking on this cabinet. Let's go ahead and pop a handle off and see what we're dealing with inside this thing. All right, guys, so here is the plastic handle we were talking about. I'm gonna go ahead, remove this handle, I'm in the light. Hi. And we'll take a look inside the cabinet. Okay guys, so as you can see here, we have our birch plywood. And even though it is birch plywood, it is a little bit thinner than something like you'd find on the Mesa itself. Uh, this handle area is not recessed either, so it's not like it's thinned out in just this area. So keep that in mind. Here we have our birch front baffle which is screwed in it is not sealed and here is our brace that goes across the front which is also birch center bracing which is a nice thick piece of wood here and then our back panel which as you can see has wood grain it is also birch so up top here we have our input jack it's a single input jack and here are our speakers the Celestian vintage 30 mf and these are made in england as you can see here. So these are not Chinese made, they were made in England. They have the 444 cones, as you can see right there. But yeah, not really much else to say about the internal construction of this cab. It is all birch like we uh, were pretty much knowing that it was going to be. One thing I will say about Marshall cabs in general is that their hardware tends to back out very easily. So anytime I buy a new Marshall cab or a used Marshall cab, the first thing I do is I go in and tighten up um, all the speaker screws because they tend to loosen very easily. I've even had some where these speakers have kind of been flopping around on the screws. And then same with the baffle screws here. These baffle screws tend to back themselves out very easily. So um, anytime I get a new Marshall cab, I'll go in and tighten those up. And if I've owned the cab for a while, I usually go in there once every year or two and just check those screws if I've been playing the cabs a lot in order to ensure that everything is still nice and snug. Don't over tighten them, but make sure that everything is nice and snug the way that it should be and not loose because that will definitely make for a bad sounding cab. So with that being said, let's put this handle back on and let's hear how this thing sounds. All right, guys. So behind me, I have four different amplifiers hooked up to the KHE Audio 4x4 amp switcher, all going into the Marshall MF cab. We have a dual rectifier multi-watt, a PV Triple X, a Marshall JCM 2000 DSL 50, and an EVH 5150 100 watt EL34 Stealth. I am using my Gibson Les Paul Studio with the 498T bridge pickup. Let's check these amps out on this cab one by one and see how they sound, starting with the EVH. <laughs> All right, so first impressions. This cab 
definitely has more resonance than something like, say, the Mesa Boogie Rectifier Oversized Cab. A lot of people like to characterize the Mesa Cab as boomy. I definitely don't think that it is because it's sealed airtight with the fixed front baffle. It's definitely a pretty tight and stiff cab. This cab definitely has some low end wolf to it, which can definitely help certain amplifiers that don't have a ton of low end frequencies going on. This cab having a floating baffle, meaning that the front end is not sealed off. There's a little bit of air that's able to pass through that front baffle and just overall slightly less rigid construction than the Mesa makes this cab kind of flex a little bit more with those low end frequencies. So it definitely gives you some more low end fullness and you know, depending on the amp, it can be a little bit punchier too, but I think the, uh, the EVH sounds great through it. Let's play another riff and then we'll move over to the Marshall. over to the Marshall JCM 2000 DSL 50. So for the Marshall, it definitely helps with the low end frequencies. It gives it quite a bit more of a full and thick sounding low end response. The JCM 2000 is not known for being the fattest amp and you know, most Marshalls aren't. They're generally very focused in the upper mids and on the bright side when it comes to the high gain stuff. So I really feel like this cab definitely helps your traditional Marshall voiced amp. It fills out the low end a little bit. And honestly, I think this combination sounds really good. Let me adjust the top end real quick and we'll play another riff. <laughs> I think this cab is definitely a good pair with that Marshall JCM 2000. It's like I said, it just fills out the frequencies that the 2000 seems to be missing, especially in the low end. And it sounds really good for the thrash metal type stuff. So on to the PV triple X. <laughs> So I think my J or triple X has a microphonic tube in it. That's what that screeching is. So going to have to take a look at that. But even so, I still think that that is the best sounding cab or amp through this cab so far. It seems to be the most balanced. The uh, top end on the Marshall is a little bit rolled off. So you kind of have to accentuate it a little bit more on the amp. And the PV just has the right mids that I've always felt sit really well with a Vintage 30. On top of that, the Triple X has a big but punchy low end and it really kind of helps keep the low end in check with this Marshall cab. So I think it's a really well balanced amp and it sounds really good through this thing. So one more riff and then we'll finally move on to the rectifier. <laughs> Those two are a great combo. I'm really digging the way that that sounds. Finally, let's check it out on the dual rectifier multi-watt. <laughs> All 
All right, so this amp so far is my least favorite with this cab, and that's because the Mesa is really well known for having just a big and boomy and kind of sloppy low end unless you can really tighten it up with the right pickups, the right boost, the right cab. Well, in this situation, the cab is not the right cab in my opinion because this cab being oversized and being a little bit more flexible overall kind of lends itself to being boomier because those low end frequencies from the rectifier are kind of just flexing the materials of the cab and the resonance of the cab is just adding to the boominess of the Mesa. So, so in that case, what I'm gonna do to account for it is switch to a different boost. We had the Deadwell Duality on. We are going to go over to the MXR M77 Badass Modified Overdrive. And just like that, our low end is very much in check and sounds nice and tight now. One final riff and we'll call it a day on the MF280 cab. That sounded really good to me. I like that. All right, guys, that is going to do it for me today on the MF280 cab. What did you guys think about this cab? Let me know down in the description. What did you hear on your end that I didn't hear here in the room? And if you own this cab or have experience with it, also leave that down in the comments. I'm really curious to see who out there has one of these because up until recently, they seem to be pretty obscure, but it seems like they've gained popularity over the last year or two. The prices have gone up. More people seem to know about them. So what do you guys think about the cab? If you have experience with it, I'm very curious to know and I'll meet you down in the comments to talk about it. If you would like to support this channel and what I do here, down in the description are all my support links, including my Sweetwater affiliate link. You click that link, get yourself something nice from the fine folks of Sweetwater. I get a little kickback. It greatly helps the channel move forward and it costs you nothing extra. I'd really appreciate it. Or you can consider adding your name to this list of fantastic people by joining my Patreon community and helping support the channel that way. I'll love you forever, whether you want me to or not. <laughs> and finally, consider joining my Facebook group where we talk about gear all day long. It's a lot of fun and a great place to share gear questions and knowledge. I would love to see you guys there. Also down below in the description, be sure to join up. Thanks so much for watching guys, Kyle here again. Make sure to hit that like button on the way out if you liked the video. Subscribe so you don't miss any more of my future uploads. And we'll see you next time.